All right. So again, this particular lesson, I want to spend some time looking at some tools and resources that can help us tremendously, I believe, in sharing the gospel with others. And so I I hope you'll find some of the things that we cover tonight to be useful to you, to be beneficial to us individually and collectively as a, a, a congregation. Here in Proverbs chapter 11, and verse 30, we read, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. In Daniel chapter 12, and verse 3, and these are the scriptures listed at the top of page 31 of your workbook. In Daniel chapter 12, and verse 3, we read, those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. We want to be wise and win souls for Jesus, as we sometimes sing, soul winners for Jesus, right? And to be those who turn many to righteousness. Um, and those who do that are like stars shining brightly forever and ever. The other scriptures listed, we've covered those many times, I believe. The two texts dealing with the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 19, Mark 16, 15, Matthew 28, 19, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mark 16, 15, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. He who disbelieves shall be condemned. Of course, that goes into verse 16. In Romans 1, 16, we are reminded not to be ashamed, as Paul was not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, knowing it's the power of God and the salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, and of course Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And so listed there on page 31 is, is 14 items, and some of them have a couple more than that. But the first one listed is home Bible studies. Of course, what we mean by that is just face-to-face. -face. That's my preferred method. Uh, it's it's uh, the most effective because you're just sitting down with someone or individuals with the Word of God, the Bible uh, opened up together and, and reading what it says together. And hopefully th th they are discovering the truth and coming to know the truth that will set them th uh, free as you do that. And so whether that's meeting at the building or whether that's in their home or your home, whatever works for them best, or uh, whether that's a home Bible study at Starbucks, wherever it may be, um, uh, that's one of the most effective, if not the most effective way, of course, of sharing the gospel with someone else is just, a, as we refer to it, maybe as a home Bible study. And then you think of uh, Bible correspondence courses. Um, and we're going to discuss this in more detail on the next page, on, on, on page 32. So we'll hold off on that. Uh, the point number three is the personal invitation to attend services. That's just word of mouth, right? Just open up our mouths. And um, remember the power and effectiveness of a simple invitation. If you don't, from our last class, all you got to do is look back on page 29. And, and we talked about, at the very end of class last week, uh, a survey that was done and the Institute for American Church Growth and they asked over 10,000 people this question. What was responsible for your coming to Christ and, and to this church? And the responses was 2% I had a special need, 3% I just walked in, 6% I liked the minister, 3% I liked the programs that were there, 1% I just happened to visit there, 5% I liked the Bible class, 5% I attended a gospel meeting, 75% a friend or relative invited me. And so that's pretty powerful, that's pretty significant. In other words, people that we already know, people that we already have a relationship with, that we have a rapport with, just simply inviting them goes a long way, clearly. Um, and we see that in Scripture, and we see that just st statistically, we know that, but it's good to be reminded of that, just a simple personal invitation to others to come and attend services, people that we know. And, of course, people that we don't know, but how, how much more effective those that we already have a relationship with. Maybe it's uh, giving them a CDD, a CD or a DVD of a lesson or just sharing with them a link to the audio where they can download a particular 
a sermon or lesson. That's a personal evangelism tool. Maybe we hear a, a sermon this uh, during our gospel meeting by one of the men that come and speaks, and, boy, and we think of somebody, and that would be really good for so and so. And and then so when that's uploaded to our website, to maybe send them the link or or tell them about it, and and, and tell them, uh, you know, this was a really good sermon, and he talked about this, and I thought of you. I thought you would enjoy listening to it, or or whether it's a sermon that that I present, uh, you know, they, these are, again, a, an evangelistic tool that we need to take advantage of. Um, Bible tracks. And we have a number of them there in the foyer, but uh, here are a couple of them. Here's a track on the New Testament church. How many people in uh, Cookville, in society in general, know really about the church of the New Testament? Okay, the one prophesied about, the one that's according to God's eternal purpose. And so here's a church with, uh, excuse me, here's a track that is going to go through that. Or what must I do to be saved? Seems like someone asked that question in Acts chapter 16. The Philippian jailer did, right? And so here's a short track. It's very, these are very concise, <laughs> which goes along with the preaching of Johnny Edwards. It's, it's very, very concise. Um, and, and, and so it's not long reads, but there's, you know, there's some statements, but it's pointing people to the scriptures as we need to. Uh, here's a couple other examples of what we have available to, to hand to people. Is there really a hell? Uh, people are maybe going to wonder about that, be, and, and, and they've heard different things that no hell, there's hell's not real, or uh, a person's just annihilated, or well, we take that will take them to what the Bible teaches, or why sing and not play in worship. In other words, why just a cappella, vocal, and not instrumental? And so those are. Um, and I have those right here. Those are just examples of some of what we have there available to us as one of our evangelistic tools that we can use. Those of you who have the workbook, if you flip over to page 35 for just a moment, please. And notice at the bottom of the page where it says the little tract. Page 35, the little tract. It says it has no passport or visa problem. It travels cheaply. It leaps language barriers and is never influenced by prejudice. It will sail across the ocean, trek across the desert, and trudge to a crowded city or a sparsely settled country cottage. It will tell its story in home or shop, in factory or field. It will reach a secluded village. TV and internet cannot reach. You know, I think when that was originally written, it didn't have the internet. I think I added that part, but uh, had to update it a little bit. But, you know, we might not think much of a Bible track, but, but some individuals have been brought to Jesus because of a track that was given to them. I know those people. Uh, and so we don't just, you know, discard and say, well, you know, for, that's not going to work on everybody, but some people it does, or at least opens up the door and... Um, an opportunity to, to do further teaching because of something like this. All right. Next, uh, we have personal evangelism books. There's many of them out there that are, have been written by uh, faithful brethren that are helpful. Um, what about newspaper articles and ads? I think this is the front cover of today's. <laughs> so that's up to date right there. Um, but we have... Every so often, for free right now, they're putting in our articles. Hopefully I don't get kicked out. But um, our next one is scheduled for not until April 22nd, and so about a month away. And, but that's just another tool that we can use uh, for articles. If we want to pay money, we can put ads in there uh, for our evangelistic efforts. If you look on page 36... Again, hopefully you have, most of you have your book tonight when I say that. But on page 36, here's some examples of some newspaper ads we used when I was living and preaching in Baytown, Texas. So the Know Your Bible Correspondence Course. Um, and then exam examples of conversion uh, chart that we had uh, put in the newspaper. And we, we had many other ads through the years. That's just two of them. That we, that we use, but I just want to cite those as some examples. We might advertise a gospel meeting. We would do that 
uh, every time we had a meeting, we'd run some ads about it in the local newspaper. Now, amazing as um, newspapers are more and more losing subscriptions because of just the age we live in and technology, uh, people do still subscribe to the newspaper, but it's amazing how much they charge <laughs> uh, to run even a small ad. But we, we would get, you know, some results from that, uh, we being the time I was spending in Texas, and so we would do that from time to time and invest some money in, in that tool for evangelism. And then radio, TV, and Internet. Now, if you go to uh, 1400, the Hub website, then one of the ads that they have on their home page is, is ours. Uh, since we pay for a program, they, they have it there. They even have a link to our website, so that's kind of nice. Uh, didn't ask for that, but that's just what they put there and what they provide. Um, I went in and recorded Sunday's program this afternoon, and it's going to be on uh, what does the Bible say about tithing. And, and so... Um, that's what that will be on, but uh, uh, radio can be a very effective medium in getting God's Word out, and we pray that it is with our efforts. Um, there was a preacher in, in Texas, he's passed away now, but uh, his name was Osby Weaver. And just to kind of give you an idea of, of his, his age or when he started preaching, he had a radio program that uh, began back during World War II, okay? But I was blessed to be able to spend some time with him in his aged years. And uh, for a long time during his, his preaching, uh, he would uh, do teaching and preaching on the radio. And he told me a story one time that he was, he was traveling on a trip and he was having some car trouble. But he was in a small town and uh, it, it might have been on a Saturday or at least... The, 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 the uh, time of day, the shops were all closed. And someone that he asked for, for help mentioned, well, there's a, there's a guy here in town, and he kind of works from his house, and maybe he can help you. So he got the address and went there. And it was a real friendly man. And um, he started working on Brother Weaver's vehicle in his garage. And he'd be underneath working on his car, and, and, and Brother Osby would be talking to him, and he'd pause and kind of roll out and kind of just kind of look strangely at Brother Osby and go back to working. And, and that happened a few times. And he said, have we met before? And he's like, I don't think so. Well, your voice sounds real familiar. And uh, come to find out, uh, he knew him from the radio. And he said, well, I learned the gospel from you on the radio. So he obeyed the gospel because of Osby. What's the chances, right? You, I mean, you never know who's listening and what they're learning, what they're picking up from God's word. But just a neat story um, that I wanted to, to share with you about that. And so, of course, we have our website, and we have, you know, we have a lot of tools on there. Um, we have all our programs, and, and thank you, Gil. He, he uploads them. I, I gave him this past Sundays tonight, and he'll, he'll get it uploaded there. And, um, and people who uh, can, can listen to all the programs that we've done on the radio. They can uh, the Know Your Bible. There's YouTube videos of each of those lessons that have been condensed that, you know, some people maybe don't want a, a copy, in, a, a paper copy in the mail. They can uh, learn and study along uh, via our website. The sermons are uploaded there. If people want to know, well, what's this church about? We, we answer some questions about that. Uh, there, there's various useful things there for us and, and of course, for the members as well. But that's an evangelistic tool, and if you don't know the address, there's a good, good thing to kind of memorize that you can share with people uh, about Jerry Whitson, rdcoc.org. Okay. And then there's mailers to the local community, number nine on page 31, uh, and to new residents that move into our area. That's something that uh, we've talked about looking into and something I think that we need to to do, hopefully in the near future, and uh, see maybe what results we can get from those kind of efforts. And then, you know, door to door. We talk about the most effective um, or most, I guess, their best prospects or contacts we've talked about are people we know. But 
there's been people that, you know, Christians didn't know and knocked on their door and now they're members of the Lord's church. Now they're in a saved condition, not a lost condition. And again, I know those individuals. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've studied with them. I've worshiped with them. And so I'll never just say, well, this doesn't work at all. Statistically speaking, is it lower than other efforts? Yeah, I believe so. But we plan to do door knocking uh, on March, what, 26th, uh, 2 o'clock. And so if you're available, come to the building and we'll go out and invite people to our upcoming gospel meeting. And there's other times that we can do that, not just for our meeting. And as you see this uh, man, perhaps his wife, but it looks like they have their kids. And I think that's a good thing uh, to do is to have your kids because I know when I've done it through the years, whether in, in Texas or Tennessee or Florida or other places, what a difference it makes if you walk up to someone's house and you got cute kids and not just, you know, this guy looking, you know, uh, they're looking out at me. And they see uh, cute Claire and Anna or Josiah, right? Uh, so it's a good thing if you can take your spouse, uh, if you can uh, have your kids with you. Uh, obviously, go in twos as Jesus sent them out. But uh, just old, good old-fashioned door knocking is a tool that we need to continue to take advantage of. And um, whether that's taking a meeting flyer to someone, a track, a door hanger, see if they'd be interested in a correspondence course or just a home Bible study to invite them to services, whatever it may be, in those conversations that we have when we do go out and make these sort of, of efforts. And so here's a door hanger we used uh, when I was in Baytown, Texas. Um, on one side, you have advertised the Bible correspondence course, Know Your Bible. Uh, it says this course is undenominational, absolutely free of charge, conducted entirely by mail, based directly on the Bible. And it talks about the different topics that are covered in those uh, lessons. And the other side, you, you know, it has the uh, uh, times of services. It has the plan of salvation with the scriptures and, and the address and the website. And so there, obviously there's various things you can put on that. One of the very first times I remember using door hangers was... Um, in 1998, when I moved uh, to the St. Louis, Missouri area, and I was working uh, briefly with a preacher named Joe Works before his, he and his family moved to Brazil for a couple of years to teach and preach down there. And Joe was about to teach at the uh, local church uh, a class on the book of Revelation. And so that was a great one to advertise on a door hanger because a lot of people want to know about the book of Revelation, right? And, and so there were people in the community that came out for that. And it was like a Tuesday or Thursday, something like that, evening class. And so we went to hundreds of houses. I remember doing a lot of walking. Um, and we were just putting out those door hangers, right? And so, you know, that's not necessarily doing the stopping and knocking at each door. You're, you're covering a lot of ground because you're just going to each one. Of course, if you see somebody, <laughs> you engage them and talk to them. But you're covering a lot of houses by just putting on a door hanger and moving on to the next one, next one and that sort of thing. Um, let's see. Number 11 is the neighborhood Bible studies. Um, on page 37, just to illustrate what I'm talking about there, your invitation to a neighborhood Bible class or neighborhood Bible study. And so... You might advertise what opportunity to study the Bible with your neighbors, where, and the person's, their names, the place, when, and the date. And then this month's topic, what does the Bible say about saving faith? What is faith? Are we saved by faith alone? What does the Bible mean by faith and works? Obviously, there's so many different topics you could, you could advertise for something like this. Uh, maybe the Sermon on the Mount, uh, just kind of to open the door to, to, to people coming uh, to, to a Bible study. And, uh, you know, some people live in a neighborhood and some people don't. And so if you live in a neighborhood, uh, you're, you're a member here at the Jerry Whitson Road Church of Christ, you'd be interested in this. Uh, talk to me and we can uh, advertise this and, and see if we can get some contacts that way. Okay. The church decided to have a Bible reading in their home. And I didn't refer to it as a Bible study because that term can be a little bit intimidating to people who don't know the Bible or have not studied it. And so we call it a Bible reading and we just get together and read the Bible, go around the circle, let everybody read a little bit. 
And then when you got through with two or three chapters, you'd discuss what you'd read and stuff like that. And if people had questions, you'd talk about it. So that seemed to be kind of effective. Yeah, so Ken said back when they were in California, on one occasion at least, they did something called just a Bible reading. And so that might be less intimidating or putting off, less putting off <laughs> uh, to word it that way for some people. And, and what better thing to do is get together and just start reading through say the Gospel of Matthew uh, or the book of Acts and after you read through maybe a chapter you look back and, and talk about it a little bit more, dig into it a little bit and, and by doing that you may, they might not realize you know they're, they're learning, they're being taught right, the truth and maybe some things that they you know I'm sure hadn't uh, seen before or been, uh, been taught before so that's, that's a good thought, appreciate that. April? When Dr. Chase was here in December he was talking about how they do um, they meet up at a library, you know, which I, I think has opened more doors because people felt more comfortable coming to a public place. And I think it was a similar thing, what Ken was talking about, like they were just reading the Bible together. And, you know, um, so he said it was working well at the library uh, where they are. Okay. And so uh, John and Gentry, uh, one of the things that they've found to be effective there in the Galena, Indiana area, that's southern Indiana, is meeting up with, with folks in the community just at the public library, getting a room there and those interested coming and just reading the Bible together and of course leading them uh, in, in that study or discussion. Uh, Robert? So along the same idea, just before the pandemic shut everything down, when I was in Danville, Kentucky, we would go over to Center College and my friend BJ said was the evangelist there. We set up in their student center and had a sign that said an open discussion on faith. I was shocked at how many students walking past stopped, looked at the sign and said, when are you doing this again? It, I, it blew me away how receptive people were to the idea of an open discussion on faith instead of, oh, this is what I'm teaching sitting there. It, I think it opens doors up like what we're talking about right now. Right. So approach matters. Um, was this a like at the beginning of the school year? Or was this just any time you could do that? Beginning of spring semester is when we started. It was literally just before the pandemic. Yeah, shut did down. they allow others kind of to set up something there? Or? It was just we just started doing it in their student center because yeah. it was open for that kind of thing. Okay, good, good. Thanks for sharing, guys. Well, I was going to say the same thing that both of them just said. At two congregations I've been at in the past, I used to do what I call the third Thursday class once a month that was generated generally by traffic through answering Bible questions online. So it was, you know, you, you ask what's on your mind. And like you said, about topics that you can present, I always had a backup of people that could come. But like he said, pe people are more in love with a neutral territory now than because they're so skeptical a lot of them yeah, yeah. and that's fine wherever they're most comfortable with talking and about spiritual things let's meet them there and it, it doesn't have to be here the the first time or the tenth time and, and until they're, they're ready for that but the most important thing is to 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 make that uh, contact and to begin those spiritual discussions with individuals Teresa, do you have your hand up um, well, my, both of my daughters and a couple of other young ladies at our congregation met um, at Chick-fil-A every Thursday um, in Tullahoma, and then they started also meeting at a place called the Celtic Cup um, and various places around, um, and it was not in, I, I guess people didn't feel just judged or you know they, they would walk by and they would listen mm -hmm. and they would sit around and maybe not participate but they were they were paying attention to what was going on and the fact that they were having a Bible study and having general discussions about um, things that they faced as young women mm -hmm. in in the world yeah. you know and that was a good that was a good thing as well. Yeah. Yeah I think Chick fil is a great place to do that. Got me interested in the question. Now, thank you for sharing that as well, Bill. I think it was on Fridays at seven o'clock. He put a sign in his yard that would advertise that they were having a Bible study on 
Friday evening, and uh, we met a lady that was at the cafeteria that we would frequent on Sundays often, and she came and uh, she was baptized. Interesting thing, the lady across the street from him uh, also came, and he got word two years later that she had obeyed the gospel as well. Which, so you just never know when you plant that seed, you know, it's going to come to fruition. Exactly. You never know. The Lord knows, but we don't, or we may, may not know for some time until it manifests itself. So appreciate that. You know, the bulletin certainly can be an evangelistic tool. It's, it's mainly, you know, obviously for those who are members here and those who visit and pick one up when you come here on a Sunday or if you got a, forgot on Sunday, grab, grab it tonight. But um, they, they too can be used as an evangelistic tool. Now, you may see an article that stands out to you. This was in the, the news, um, and so there are quite a few that wrote articles about it. Um, but Catholic baptisms ruled invalid. And so that was pretty interesting, but that's something that may perk the interest of others, even if, whether they're Roman Catholic or not, because after you, you sh kind of share the news story, um, then you, you're in the next page, uh, David starts, you know, answering these things from the scriptures. And so I pay attention to the bulletin. Of course, on the bulletin, on the back side, you also got times of services, our website, the radio program, and so it's another evangelistic tool besides the articles uh, themselves. And of course, gospel meetings. Seems like we have one around the corner. Oh yeah, there it is. March 27th, April 1st. So that's coming up a week from uh, Sunday. And we, um, we have, of course, the, the flyers back in the foyer, we have the, the postcards that you can mail out. And on the, uh, on the postcards, we have uh, additional information. We have even um, the radio program that's, that's advertised there, our website, uh, which is on both. And of course, the topics, uh, the speakers, uh, the times and all that. So um, you don't have to wait for um, Saturday, and I hope you haven't. Um, for March 26th for the door knocking, grab them and, and be inviting people all, already, whether that's mailing them out, handing them out, whatever you want to do. Let's take advantage of that. And just on a regular basis, some of our, our members had these made up for us to use. You know, Jeff and Rhonda had this business size, size card with, with the church's information and everything. Um, our website, radio uh, stations, information, the, our times of services. And so we got a box of them back there. We had these nice postcards, n not for the meeting, just for in general to use to hand out to people or to mail to folks. And so let's take advantage, advantage of all these resources, evangelistic tools that we, we have available uh, to us. And um, the last one I have on page 31 is Bible booth, a Bible booth at a local fair. And uh, Robert mentioned Center College there in Kentucky that they did this. One of the things that came available there in Baytown, Texas, was a community college there. It was called Lee uh, College. And the reason I was asking you those follow-up questions is to see if it was similar to, it was in the st student center, and this was at the student center at Lee College, and it also was nice because we had a number of members that volunteered to help. We had young people, and we had middle-aged, and we had elderly people, and I'm not going to go through all the pictures. I'll just show the one. Uh, but it was so nice that they just let us set up a table there and uh, didn't charge us anything. And there were other people, that, businesses or whatever, had tables set up. But, I mean, that's where all the crowd's coming through. And uh, so we had, you know, various tracks to hand out. We had uh, uh, information about the our place of worship and the map and how to get there, which was very close to the community college. And uh, people signing up for the correspondence course or a home Bible study. And, and, and so, um, you know, when do you have those things in community where whether you're paying for it and certainly when you don't have to pay for it, as we didn't hear, uh, those are things you, you definitely want to take advantage of um, to, to, to reach more people with the gospel. Because, again, you never know with those uh, seeds that you plant of God's word there was also a, uh, I'm trying to think of the name, it was Baytown, what was it called? 
what's that? Yeah, market days or something, um, but it was in one of the downtown buildings in Baytown, and so a number of times, this would happen maybe three or four times a year, we had a booth there with, I mean, there were booths all over the place, and so there was a lot of crowds that came through there, so we did that a as well um, to, to take advantage of, and of course, you can think you got a pretty big fair in Putnam County, right? And, and so we already have a plan, Lord willing, to do it this coming year, um, and so we've already been talked about that in, the, in men's meetings. And one of the great things, better look at my time, I think one of the most effective things that I've seen at these booths and fairs that I've been a participant of, even up in Canada with my cousin when he preached there, uh, and that was called the Canadian National Exhibition. And I don't know, it was a million to two million people would come to this thing over a period of, uh, I think 18 days, and so I would go up for a number of years to help out for about a week, and, uh, but they would have these electronic quiz boards, and so a Bible quiz, test your knowledge, but th those things really brought in people because they want to see if they can answer these things, and, and, and you got to have good questions. I mean, you don't just have uh, how many sons did Noah have, you know, how many books are in the Bible. You want something that would would kind of lead to some conversation, some discussion. So we would have those. And I think that's been done here in the past, as I was told. Maybe we have those, and we'll need to work on that and get them ready. But uh, those are can be very effective, and then that can lead to even more sign-ups as you use that as a lead-in to, well, we got this great um, Bible study called Know Your Bible, and you can just take that at home and mail that to us, and we'll... we'll We'll look over it and send it back with the, the next uh, lesson. And, and so I'm, I'm excited, looking forward uh, to that uh, later this year. And so as we think about uh, on page 32, home Bible studies, of course, we had talked about this a little bit already, and we're just talking about an open Bible and, and teaching someone about Jesus, about salvation, just with the Bible open. And so you can't, you can't improve on that, right? on just the Word of God, but sometimes it, can, it, it helps us or gives us maybe a little more confidence if we have a, a, a plan to follow, and so there's many great resources out there, uh, one of which is the Home Bible Study uh, by Johnny Edwards, and it's just four lessons, uh, authority and religion, uh, God's plan for saving man, uh, the church, and then the worship of the church, and so... You know, it's not very long, and uh, I've, used, I've used this a lot in uh, uh, Bible studies with others. And then there's the open Bible study. Probably one of the first things I began using initially in my preaching um, was this open Bible study. It just has three lessons and then a worksheet that goes along with it. And it's, it's, it's pretty dated, but it's effective because all you're doing is looking up some scriptures and then answering yes and no questions uh, after those scriptures. And so here's the back page of lesson one. So it has Matthew 28, 20 at the top. So you read that, which says after verse 19, uh, and go therefore make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you. Did Jesus say you could observe part of his will and still please him? Well, no, uh, he didn't. Is it your understanding that you must do all of the will of God to please him? Uh, well, yes, that's what Jesus said there. And, and so that's all it is. You're, you're looking, reading a scripture together and take turns reading those scriptures and then answering these yes or no questions right from those scriptures you read. So it's very straightforward. Um, and so it's been a while since I've used that, but I used it for, for a good long while before I kind of started using some other things. Uh, one of the things I, that I continue to use from this study, well, let me talk about this first, the worksheet, the yellow worksheet. Uh, one thing I would always use, I didn't use everything in the worksheet, but I would use this. As you go through those three lessons, you put in a key word or phrase as you go through them, uh, this, your spiritual ladder leading up to heaven. And one side, uh, you got the grace of God, and uh, the other side, do all the will of God. And, of course, your foundation, 1 Corinthians 3.11, is Jesus Christ. Uh, Romans 10.17 is in the corner. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him, as Hebrews 11.6. 6. 
but then on the other side of this page, on the right side of the worksheet, um, I didn't use this so much, but I did always use this. And I would always begin, you, you would always begin with this before you get in the actual study. And the questions are, if you can't see them, is have you ever made a commitment to Christ? If yes, how old were you? Uh, did you make a confession at the time of your commitment? What did you confess? Have you been baptized? How were you baptized? How long after your commitment were you baptized? For what purpose were you baptized? Were you saved before or after your baptism? Do you understand why it's important to ask those questions at the beginning and not later on? What I've, I've seen is when you don't ask those questions and you take someone from a denominational background who wasn't taught the truth on the plan of salvation, you get through those scriptures and they all of a sudden kind of transfer that to what they did in the past. Yeah, that's what I did. But they didn't. That's what I was taught. No, they weren't taught that. And let me give a quick example of that. I've mentioned Gwen from Baytown, uh, the uh, sister in Christ that works at Supercuts. That's how I met her. And I had her feel like I wasn't using this, but I was still using those questions because they're so important. And so I just give that sheet to them. I let them fill it out. And I said, well, and after I get done, I take it and I just hang on to it. And then I don't bring it up until we get to the end of the study. And so this is how she answered. Have you ever made a commitment to Christ? If yes, how old were you? She said late 30s. Uh, yes, in late 30s. Did you make a confession at the time of your commitment? Yes. What did you confess? I was wrong in my actions and I promised never to do it again. Have you been baptized? Yes. How were you baptized? She said by water. Uh, how long after your commitment were you baptized? Uh, she was, then she said I was baptized as a child. For what purpose were you baptized? She didn't know how to answer that. She put a question mark. And then were you saved before or after your baptism? You know what she put? Before. You know what she said after we got done with our study? She was saved after. I said, Glenn, can you look at what you wrote in here? Boom. It clicked and tears came down and she obeyed the gospel. So these questions are very important. I continue to use them when I study with a non-Christian just because it's better beforehand than after the fact because sometimes they, they forget or they transfer what you've taught them to what they did and they don't match up. And so I just wanted to share that with you real quick. And then what we advertise on our website and what we have here that we can mail out to folks are these six lessons uh, called Know Your Bible. And the first one just covering understanding the Bible better, just kind of an overview and the difference between the Old and New Testaments. And then the second lesson is sin and the blood of Christ. And the third one, and this is on page 32, if you have it, what must I do to be saved? And then the New Testament church and then denominationalism and, and then baptism. And, and so we have those YouTube videos as well on our website for those. But there's others. Even the home Bible study by Johnny Edwards, those have been put into where they can be mailed out. Uh, those four lessons on authority and religion, God's plan for saving man, the church and the worship of the church. And they're available on DVD as well. And there's others that I have listed there. The Bible Speaks, a series by Robert Harkrider and a few others. If you go to page 33, bottom page 33, personal evangelism books and resources, there's Answering the Religious Error. This is actually the book that we're going to be covering beginning in April uh, for the second quarter of the year. And I thought this would be a good follow-up to our studies on personal evangelism as we get into conversations with people from many different religious backgrounds, sometimes with a kind of a mixed bag of teachings. Uh, this, this is an excellent resource. It's very concise and, and going through. It has like 56 uh, different uh, religious errors. And then how do we, how do we answer those? And how, we, how do we, uh, where's the answers uh, in God's word? And so we're going to be doing that. We're going to take 36 of the 56 because we, in, in three months we're... <laughs> We're not going to be able to do all of it, but at least you'll have it for those others that we won't be able to cover in class. Um, maybe you've heard of muscle and a shovel. Some brethren like it, some don't. I've read through it, and, I, and a lot of people ask me, what do you think about it? I said, like, well, I don't know until I read it. One of the things I did like about it, one of the main things I liked about it, it relies so heavily on Scripture. I can't remember how many Scriptures it has in it, but it keeps pointing the person that's reading it to God's Word. This was written by a man that was from the Baptist church 
uh, who was taught by a co-worker. And, and of course, he resisted and pushed back and everything, but eventually he learned the truth. Uh, I've seen where it's been effective with some people and other people it, it's not. But it's just another tool that can, can be effective. Um, am I ready? This is a great one when our young people uh, began asking questions about being ready to be baptized wanting to be baptized, and maybe we're not for sure if they know enough or are ready, this is an excellent study uh, for them to do. And then maybe someone that has some questions and doubts, and there's a lot of great resources on, on that, on evidences, but here's a good one that I've gone through out with doubt by Cal Butt. All right, that was the second bell. I'll just touch upon uh, next week a couple of things, but prepare mainly for lesson seven, the final lesson next week. Thank you.